Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, in this video, we are going to continue using this idea of finding the overall rate law from the mechanism, um, but we're going to come up with some approximations for how to deal with intermediates. So um, in the last video, I showed you an example using an intermediate and setting up the equilibrium, but we're going to come up with some more details and some vocabulary surrounding these approximations and to try to figure out when these approximations are valid or not valid. So in this video, I'm going to cover what is called the steady state approximation. You can find this in chapter 14.2 in your textbook. So really what we are doing is we are trying to figure out how to deal with intermediates. So based upon the idea that the rate determining step is the one that determines our reaction, so this is the rate determining step, So assuming that that step is really what is important and everything after the rate determining step just happens and isn't really affecting our overall experimental rate of the reaction, we can set up and say that the rate of change of water, which is a product with respect to time, is equal to K2 times the concentration of H2 times the concentration of N2O2. But the challenge is that this N2O2, and this is an intermediate. And so that means that it cannot stay in this rate law. We have to find a way to get rid of it um, because it's really, it's not a reactant or product. And therefore, it's really hard for us to measure experimentally. And so we shouldn't have our rate law depending upon something that our thermodynamics doesn't depend on and something that we really can't measure. So one way to do this is that we can set up the expression for how the rate of the of the intermediate changes with time and so this is that the intermediate is created using with k1 the forward reaction of the equilibrium step it is used up by the reverse reaction of the equilibrium step and it is used up in the rate determining step. Now, when we apply the steady state approximation, we are going to assume that these processes of using the intermediate, that these processes are fast as compared to making the intermediate. So that basically means that as soon as we make any intermediate, it is going to be used up. And so the concentration, the amount of intermediate in the system at any given time is pretty constant. It, it really doesn't change with time. And so that is the assumption that we can make. And that's the assumption that the steady state approximation makes. And so the steady state approximation says that this is not changing. And so, and so what we can do is we can set all of this equal to zero. And that's exactly what we do in the steady state approximation. We set this 
rate of the intermediate, this change, we set that rate to B0. And then we go through and we solve for the concentration of our intermediate and we get an expression for the intermediate and that allows us to plug it into our rate law, giving us a final answer of the rate law. Okay, so in PCAM, when we make an approximation, we always want to check ourselves and make sure that the approximation is valid. And to know and to really think about understanding the limitations of our approximation. So to do that, what we do is we will create a graph of the experiment versus the predicted. And the experiment that we're working with here is a hypothetical where we have A plus B is an equilibrium with C, which then reacts to form D. So um, this is not unlike the example problem that we've been doing. And when we do this, what we are doing is we are graphing, we are monitoring the concentration of A, the concentration of D, and the concentration of the intermediate. And we are comparing this to our predicted concentrations. And on the graph, we're going to label those as A primed and D primed. And so when K minus one is much less than K two, so what does this mean? This means that our intermediate is being used to form D, our product, instead of reforming our reactants. When this is the case, we see very little difference between the prediction and the experiment. And on this graph, there is really only one set of lines. And so that tells us that our prediction of our concentrations is very, very good if K minus one is less than K two. Now, what we can, what we are doing here is the same thing. So we've got the same sort of hypothetical reaction. And we have our experimental concentrations. And we have our predicted concentrations. And you can see in this graph, if K2 is less than K1, so that tells us that K1 is pre producing intermediate, but then our intermediate really isn't used, or using of the intermediate is slow, then this approximation breaks down. And we can see that with our experiment, remember the experiment is this top one, and the bottom is predicted. We can see that with the experiment, or with, I'm sorry, we can see that with our reactant A, and we can see that difference with our product 
D. That, and what we are really seeing is that there is a significant difference between the predicted concentrations and the experimental concentrations. And this tells us that when K2 is much less than K1, the steady state approximation is not a valid approximation. We have to, and so we have to be careful when we apply this. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to work through another approximation that's going to try to give us a solution for what we have to do when this steady state approximation fails.